Hello everyone and welcome back to Kobean History. In today's video of Medieval Professions, we are gonna have a look at the town crier. This profession is often seen as being kind of synonymous with a herald, but these two professions are distinct from each other, even though they sometimes do seem to do the same kind of job. In particular, making announcements, which the Herald does as well, but the Herald has a lot more other and more important things that he does as well. I've made a video about Heralds in the past and I'll link that at the end of the video as well. But today we're talking about the Town Crier. Another term to refer to the profession of town crier is the bellman, because as you might have guessed, they also carried a bell around to get people's attention. They were, and still are, officers of a royal court or a public authority who make public announcements in the streets. Criers are often dressed elaborately in a red and gold coat, white breeches, black boots and a tricorn hat. This outfit tradition dates back to the 18th century, but the profession itself is much older than that. It is said that the criers can trace their origins back to early Greek mythology, where Stentor, a herald of the Greek forces during the Trojan War, was said to have the voice of 50 men. You might have noticed that here he is referred to as a herald, not a town crier. So it's worth mentioning that before the Middle Ages there was no real heraldry. So the distinction between town criers and heralds was a bit more vague. In this sense, the main difference between herald and town crier is that heralds are mainly used for military announcements and bring messages from one side of the conflict to another whereas the announcements of the town criers were mainly aimed at the local population of a town or city. Later on in the Middle Ages, this distinction would become clearer when the herald's profession started to drift more away from delivering messages and making announcements. A form of town criers was also present in Rome, where they would proclaim and make announcements on the market days, which formed a sort of weekend every eight days. Now we come to the Middle Ages, and in medieval Europe the town criers were the main means of communication between the governing authorities and the people. The key requirements you had to have to be a town crier or a bellman was the ability to read, a loud voice and an air of authority. They didn't have a fixed wage, but they were paid for each proclamation they made. In English-speaking countries, they carried a handbell to attract the public's attention. Town criers were not only limited to using bells, for example in the Netherlands a gong was the instrument of choice for many. In France a hunting horn was often used, or in later ages in India the crier often used a rustic drum. Before making their announcements they would often shout Oye Oye Oye. And at the end of the proclamation the crier would end the announcements by saying God save the king or God save the queen. The word oye means hear ye, which is often also used as a call for silence or attention. Oye is derived from the old French word for listen. The use of this word in England probably dates back to the Norman conquest. And this is also around the same time where we see the first depiction of town criers in medieval England, as two bellmen appear on the Bayeux tapestry. Town criers were protected by the law, as they sometimes had to bring bad news to the people, such as tax increases. And understandably, this might anger the population. So that's why anything done by the town crier was done in the name of the ruling monarch. And thus, if any harm came to the town crier, it was considered to be treason. And the phrase, don't shoot the messenger, also originates from this profession. Most of what we know about town criers comes from after the Middle Ages. And the stereotypical view of town criers we have today started to appear around the 17th century. In Europe, prior to the widespread literacy that we have now, 
Town criers were the main means to convey information to the townsfolk or advertise. And that's also why the town criers are also sometimes referred to as talking newspapers or newscasters. Criers would inform people about adverts, local bylaws, proclamations and market days. Town criers were also present at public hangings to read out why the person was being hanged and then they would also stick around to help cut the rope to get the body down afterwards. Additional tasks that town criers could also be employed to do is leading parades, opening markets, launching ships or attend any official functions and act as an ambassador of goodwill. An example of one of the ways town criers would have advertised comes from England in 1798 when the Chester Canal Company was selling some sugar which was damaged in their packet boat and used the town crier to advertise for this. Another type of example for the kinds of announcements a crier would make comes from the town of Goslar in Germany. Here a town crier was employed to remind the local population not to urinate or defecate in the river the day before water was drawn for the use of brewing beer. Also, the term posting a notice comes from the act that was carried out by many criers who, after having read the messages to the townspeople, would attach the written message on the doorpost of the local inn. This act can also be seen as to have influenced many newspapers as many gave their newspapers the name The Post. In this video I've used the term town crier and bellman pretty synonymously because nowadays they are used to refer to the same person as being a town crier. But back in the day a bellman was actually a separate position from the town crier. The bellman would rank below the town crier and they would be active at night opposed to the town crier which would make announcements during the day. And the bellman's main function wasn't to make announcements either, it was to patrol the streets at night, acting as a peacekeeper, arresting troublemakers and then taking them to the stocks for their punishment, as well as posting their crimes to let everyone know what they had done. They would also enforce the curfew and watch out and sound the alarm in case of a fire, the word curfew also has a different meaning today than it had in the days of the bellman. Back then it literally meant cover your fire, so the bellman would also be responsible to make sure people dampened down their flames at night time. They would sometimes also go around and announce the time and weather conditions. We can take an example of this from the famous diaries of Samuel Pepys. In an entry from the year 1660, he says, I sat up till the bellman came by with his bell, just under my window as I was writing of this very line, and he cried, Past one of the clock and cold, frosty, windy morning. I then went to bed and left the wife and made a washing still. Town criers are still employed today, However, it is often in a ceremonial setting. For example, in England, town criers are still used, unofficially, to announce royal events such as royal births or royal weddings. Town criers are not just men either, they can also be women. An example of this is Yvonne Chamberlain, who was an English crier for 40 years. Chester is the only place in Britain where you can still hear the town criers regularly. You can see them at midday every Tuesday to Saturday between June and August at the High Cross and this is the place where proclamations have been read in Chester since the Middle Ages. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. If you're interested in more medieval professions, you can find the link to the playlist on screen right now. Or if you're interested in history as a whole, you can check out my channel to find a wider variety of topics. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support and especially my $15 patrons, Parker Dye and G. David.